So the bouncer kicked me out after I did that to the girl, man. She Ooh. was pissed off, dude. I just don't know. I don't get it, dude. I don't know how you got. I don't know how, first off, how you were able to do it for so long. Yeah. And then I got second, <laughs> not I just got get like thrown in jail for every ludity law. Oh yeah, in the United oh, yeah. States. No, I was I mean, lucky, man. And yeah, how did you? Good. How did you sneak? How did you sneak a weasel in there? Like I don't even get that. Dude, it was super easy, man. I, I had it in my pants. It was so. super easy to hide it. Hey, whoa, are we, are we whoa. Like... Oh shit! Someone hit record. Oh, oh, fuck, oh you know um, what that means? We're we're without the uh, the uh, without blueberry sugar, aka Benjamin James, this evening. So guess what, folks? The the what is it? What is it called? Whenever the uh, the patients have taken over the asylum. Oh, uh, Animal House? Yeah, so it's happening, guys. We, we're here today, and and uh, let's see. And we're going to do our very best intro. Rick, roll it Oh, in. yes. Welcome to Skip the Noise Podcast. And uh, thank you to Mike Tackle Box <laughs> for the vivacious tunes. And uh, we're here today for another episode. Yeah. So there you go. And we're, from, oh. of course, a Rounded Edge Media production. Oh, that's right. We're a Rounded Edge Media production. Are we... And we're on the eve of a, a snowstorm today here in Texas. Oh, snow, uh, ice mageddon. That's ice mageddon or yes. snowvid, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> snowvid, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, man. So it's, it's touched down on Dallas now, huh? It hasn't gone to Houston yet. We're still in the 70s over here, which is beautiful. What? You're in the Dude, 70s? We were in the 70s this afternoon, and right now we're like in the low 60s. Oh, no. no it's beautiful. No. It's beautiful outside. I don't want to be there all day right now. <laughs> Well, you don't want to be where I'm at right now. We're in the upper 20s as we speak. And my trees look like something out of a winter wonderland. They have ice. They're all iced over. All the branches are completely iced over. And there's ice collecting everywhere. And we have sleet falling on us as we speak. Okay. Um, the forecasting to have two to three inches of actual ice and sleet mixture that will be stuck on the roadways by tomorrow afternoon. So oh, no. it, the whole city shut down. The whole city shut down. They shut down all the kids' schools tomorrow and Friday. My job is shut down. Everyone shut down for the next, and probably until Monday, to be quite honest with you. So um, with that yeah. being said. So this is supposed question. to last four days, actually. Well, we, we don't go above freezing until Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah all yeah. the ice will not dissipate until after Saturday. Well, you know that uh, even Sunday, you may dissipate, but you're still in the 30s. High oh, yeah, 30s no, then we get another hard Sunday. freeze overnight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it sucks, dude. It sucks. Oh, I hate that shit, dude. Well, um, but, but the real question is, will the power stay on? It will, it will. <laughs> Governor Abbott is on it's it. Oh, yeah. He's, okay. he's been tweeting on it. He's been he's doing oh, conferences. Shit. Oh, uh, he's been tweeting he's on it, man. Oh, did you see what he said? He, what he asked all the crypto miners in, in Midland and all that? No, what he say? He said, he said, could you guys please not crypto mine so much? He literally said that. He asked, he asked all the crypto miners in Texas to give him a break with with the with all the power requirements that are going to be needed oh, to please chill out. He literally said this. Did he say, do you, me a solid and pump yeah, his chest? basically he's like come on hook a homeboy up i mean come on you things have been rough enough for me i don't i don't need i don't need you guys to to get your 12 bitcoin off the blockchain tonight just just please it's an election year come on guys <laughs> dude and with the with with huff Hines, oh my god that guy is he's borderline fascist i mean oof, dude you th i mean if, if you have have you seen his billboards and stuff Huffines. Huffines. He's, so uh, he, he's, he's running against Abbott. Oh, as, the as a Republican. All right. Oh, shit, dude. You think that. I mean, he makes he makes Abbott like like look like AOC. This guy is <laughs> he does, bro. This guy is so far right. I mean, he's about half an inch from goose stepping. I mean, oof. This is you one. know what? Yeah, dude. He's bad. you know what though? It makes sense that I'm, I asked you what you were talking about because I haven't seen any of those billboards here in Houston. <laughs> you, I'm, I'm inside the loop, um, and I haven't seen any of those billboards. I see oh, a bunch dude. of billboards for, like, you know, impeach Trump and shit like that, but or BLM, but, but I don't see anything <laughs> about the dude. Republican primary. I, I even forgot it was there, honestly. Dude, it is amazing. So he has all these billboards. Um, hold on. Uh, I want to see if I can pull up one real quick. We're doing a skip the noise um, 
Now, the only thing that I have seen, though, and because, you know, it's, it's an inner loop thing, is Mattress Mac has offered um, to put up his own candidate against uh, Lena Hidalgo. Oh, please. So thank God yeah, for that, I think that, that needs to be. I, well, I don't. Okay. Thank you, Mac. I don't think county commissioners and stuff like that need to be involved in political parties. Yeah, right? I know. I they just shouldn't. think it needs to be a local resident that, you know what I'm saying? It, it, I think politics, I think when it comes to like county business, it should be a different thing. But but yeah, basically, um, but one of Huffine's favorite ones is stop giving illegals our money. Huffine's mm. for governor uh, mm. and actual Republican. <laughs> like it, it, he's kind of, I don't know, dude, he's kind of a bit much. He's very, very to the right. Um, How to the right? How much? Like a... About to Ooh, step over the edge. Like I'm telling you, dude, like a, a half an inch from goose stepping. He is all in. E, I mean, probably, probably one of those. Like, he's probably pretty damn close to trying to be a separatist. He is not. He's definitely not what I think Texan Republicans would really want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It, no, it's, it's pretty. You know, it's pretty messed up, man. It, it's it, it. He he puts all these. He puts a lot of these billboards actually out here um yeah because i haven't seen any not yeah. here in the houston area oh no they're all out here they're all here he put he puts a bunch of them he's trying to he's trying to of course he's trying to uh, he talks about eliminate property taxes etc cetera, etc cetera. you can't do that you not in texas it's not gonna work well we can we can we've talked about it you can oh, eliminate God. property taxes but you're gonna have to institute a flat tax right on every or state income tax yeah well no a flat tax you just really instead of doing the um the property taxes you just raise our sales the state sales tax up to 14 percent, 15 percent. yeah but those aren't uh those are those are pro- what did they call them progressive taxes where they affect everybody well, yeah, they're not progressive taxes so they, they say that impacts yeah. it, it impacts um the poor more but exactly. really the problem is well and i think and while they that 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 is true in a sense but what it also does is and this is a very libertarian ideal in a sense but also at the same time i think there's a lot of confusion around it because it would actually promote people to save more you know what i'm saying no. because instead of spending money and losing yeah. the 14 percent, a lot of people would just say fuck it i'm just not going to buy that extra shirt i'm not going to buy that because i'd no, rather no. it promotes saving you're going to crush the economy and, and, yeah, exactly. I mean, why why have people save money and actually not have debt? That would, you know, what, what would that do to growth? So I really think the flat tax is number one pro, you know, proponents or opponents actually are not. It's just people who want to keep the, the wheel running, right? People that want to keep people in debt, people that want to keep people buying things because property taxes and shit, if you really look at it, when you assess them, they can't be collected by every, from every individual in the state. What do you mean? Right. Well, think about it. Not every individual in the state lives in a home. Like, don't get me wrong. No apartments, et cetera. They 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 figure their property taxes yeah. into leases and agreements. And same thing with like you know rental homes and such. But in what the about end, um, manufactured huh? homes? Manufactured homes. Yeah, they do. do. They pay taxes. Yes, they do. I think really? I think every I, th- I believe everyone does. I believe. I, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know about mobile homes. I do know if you're on a Dude. property and you own it, you have to pay taxes. So maybe the, like, let's say if it's a mobile home community, yeah. the, the proprietor, the owner has to pay taxes the on that yeah. land's That's property. True. So, I mean, I, I imagine in a way it touches everyone, but imagine if everyone really paid it. You know what I'm saying? I, that's one thing I just will never understand is why we don't really think about, you know, just from a federal level and everything, just like a 30% sales tax. No, hell no. 30%? Yep. No. Yep. 30, dude. 35%. And no one's going to buy anything. Listen, get rid, of the, get rid of the fucking IRS. Done. That'd be nice. No more other taxes. Can we get rid of the FDA too? Or at it? Well, and no, but think about it. No other taxes. No more other bullshit. Imagine all you do is you, when you buy your fucking Coke, can of Coke for a dollar, on the just 30. to make it easier, it's a dollar 30, <sighs> and you don't have don't to know, deal man. with the IRS. You don't have to deal with property taxes continuously diminishing the return on your property every year. You don't have to worry about all that bullshit. Because if you think about it, if you buy a home, right, for $200,000 and you're yeah. paying 3% property taxes, you're paying $6,000 a year on that home that you, 
even if you were to sell it the next year at a 10% increase, you actually still lose money. Yeah. Because you had no, to pay I, all that property tax. I don't agree with property taxes either because the general rule when you buy a house is you go three times your salary. Yep. But what happens when you start paying taxes on three times your salary? Boom. Uh, you're, you're fucked, you know? So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't agree with property taxes either. Well, what do you I know that's what Texas with, prides itself off. Huh? Well, what do you think is going to happen when, with all these, you know, all these jerk offs or like, you know, all the property, the, the, what's it called? The, uh, uh, the cost of homes have increased substantially. And what do you yeah, think is going to happen next year? Fuck faces. Everyone's going to have serious problems because think about it. Your home that you bought for 200 grand is now going to be tax assessed for 450. That's a substantial change in your overall property tax, correct? I mean, that's fucking scary. Think of how many people are going to be pushed out of their homes because of that. Wait a second. Wait a second. If you buy your home for 200000 because you put like an extra 20000 over asking. Right. Um, but your home is assessed less because doesn't the, don't the values drop because of you know, whatever the economy no, says? No, the values are going to go up because what they're going to do is, so see, when they evaluate property costs and stuff like that, they actually take sales comps into okay. the equation. All right. So if you got home selling for 500,000 now because of this crazy runaway home inflation, I, I guess that's a way you can call it runaway home inflation. I mean, that's yeah. kind of what it is. Yeah, I don't even think it's really sense. home value. It's just home inflation. Um, if you get caught in that, you, the, the counties in Toronto will say, you can try to say your house is worth 300, but the guy next door to you sold his for 500,000. We want our taxes. That's a substantial difference. I'm mean, like, why do I have to pay? Because something there who wanted to pay for hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars over asking. Come on, dude! I'm telling you, and it's happening. <laughs> Can um, I just say that, dude? I'm no, telling I can't, you. Actually, I tried it already. I know everyone does. I, I, I <laughs> might kick a hole in my wall and act like there's rats and shit everywhere. I mean, it's pretty bad though, if you think about it. It's it's a it's a scary it's a scary situation because people don't realize, but their 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 mortgages are going to go up. 10 15 percent and for people Reus. already on the line that's a substantial amount of money think about it your mortgage are the mortgages is gonna go, gonna go 10, yeah percent really well Why? think about it so like, like let's take the standardized thing um a year and a half two years ago your house was worth 250 grand yeah most right. people that are that houses were worth 250 grand are now worth almost four hundred thousand. that's correct so you take yeah, because 3%. you said your house has yeah, gone up. doubled has doubled in the last what ten, five years or something? Yep, double. Yeah. So, let's say shit. Y'all might hear a little little wiggle from a microphone. My bad. Um, let's just say you bought your home for two hundred thousand. Now it's worth three hundred fifty thousand. You got to pay that three percent on that hundred fifty thousand. So that you know roughly comes out to what five thousand dollars, forty five hundred dollars. You break that into yeah. twelve months. So the average, I think, mortgage on a two hundred thousand dollar home is about twelve hundred dollars. Well, you take forty five hundred dollars break into twelve months. That's three four hundred dollars extra a month. Yeah, that's real money. That's money people were was, were counting on, but now they got paying taxes. Hmm. And you're not going to get this full write off on it because, for the most part, standard deductions cover you up to twenty four thousand dollars now. So, in the end, you're pretty screwed still. You're so paying you paying more taxes and not writing off more. So you, you know, you can write off your sales tax. By the way, I don't know if you know that on the IRS right, form, what? you can write off your sales tax. Yeah, if you're know. a business. Yeah. No, no, no. As a regular, oh, him, as a regular citizen. Oh yeah. Look you go that. to your, you go to your statements. You oh. calculate how much you spend on consumer products or whatever the shit you bought. Calculate the tax, the sales tax on it. You can write that off. Oh. I yeah. didn't know this. I yeah. Know. Well, you know what? I'm probably going to get a CPA this year. We're going to get a CPA this year. I'm not going to mess with <laughs> Man, how much money are you making? Shit, dude. Uh, get it all. You're the rich boy. I'm no, still no, using, you know ter- I'm I'm still using Turbo Tax. I'm tired of that bullshit. I'm tired of guessing. I don't want to deal with these. I just want someone else to say, hey, look, this is what it's going to cost. This is what yeah. we can do. And my, my name's on the line. Huh. You know what happens? What? You got to pay real taxes, man. You can't just lie on that shit. <laughs> see? Yeah. You know you what? See, Turbo Tax? We're Turbo Tax? That number, you know, goes it goes red if you, if you owe, and it goes green if they owe you money. And so when that shit goes red, check. man, when Bro. that shit goes red, you start like adding shit. Like, hey, I remember I bought a 
I bought a piece bought a of bike. property. Yeah. yeah I bought when two in reality, bikes. you bought soil, you know? I mean, it's kind of like dirt. Uh, you know, I gave away $35,000 to this charity the other day. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. Okay. How much can we claim? How much can we claim in charities without having to prove it? $200? <laughs> Fuck that shit, man. Put $200 in there. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I get you. I get you. But yeah, no, I'm still fuck this. I'm tired of dealing with the IRS. I, I just let somebody else hold that bullshit. So, but yeah, it, but anyways, so coming all the way back around, um, you do, you do have, we, we have ice Mageddon. It's occurring as we speak. We have a energy grid that is so, so, and this is something we got to be what to be continue, right? Like if everyone loses power tomorrow, this, that will be the number one story we're going to have next week. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the reality yeah, is whether or dude. not things go out. And I lost, huh? yeah, I lost power last year, dude. I, it's, it's, it's still like, I still get PTSD from that. You know, oh, that? people do from losing power. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I still God, get my... from being in the fucking cold ass in my own home. How am I going to freeze to death in my own home? That's know, crazy, dude. dude. I know. Like, that's supposed to be your refuge. My cat can survive in 30 degree weather outside and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Bro, I get you. I totally get you. The sad thing is nothing you can do, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Burn your house? If I burn my house, I can stay warm. But yeah, that's the scary part. And right now, Texans are nervous again. So I'll be quite honest with you. If let's say tomorrow the lights go out, Abbott's in deep shit. Yeah, he like is. we may have the it, it, we could he very is. well see a Huffines versus Beto uh, oh, wow. war for wow. governor. And 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 honestly, no one's gonna vote. No one's gonna vote. They're just gonna say, yeah. fuck it. We're gonna write in Mickey Mouse, <laughs> and that's about how it's gonna go because nobody wants either one of those D bags to come in. But the hard the hardliners on each side of the party are gonna somehow because really that's where the primary system screwed, right? In the What's end, that? it's it, how many dorks do you really know vote in the primary? Like one. Yeah, no, I mean you got to take time off work to go vote exactly. in the primary. Exactly. Who's going to do that? No how many do dorks? That. So it's always a hardliners. The good dude, people have the hard on for that particular candidate and for that yeah. particular progressive or hard or, or conservative type thing. The, I, I think the primary system is stupid. It, it it weighs too much to the um to the zealots, you know. Whereas if you the had like time, a, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm not gonna take time off my job to go and vote in the primary. <laughs> exactly. And then I, I can't do anything the weekends because I got these kids and they like demand my time. So I can't do that either. Exactly. So now I'll just let the let's pick the, the candidate and then I'll vote in the in the main one. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying though, but it gives them way too much power because yeah, then does. you got these crazy fucking candidates based on these crazy zealots, and you're just like, I mean, I, I don't want to pay as much taxes, but I don't want women to not be able to wear mini skirts. So, I mean, you know, I mean, they're going to wear burkas, uh... <laughs> burkas, right? <laughs> or wear like scarlet nice. letters if they have premarital, like, a, like, like, like situations. But moving on, um, I'll tell you one thing. Um, definitely going to be some interesting things going on in the NFL where Coach Brian Flores, have you heard about this? Yeah, he's got full Colin Kaepernick, man. I, yeah. I, you know, I think I, I don't. I normally I would like to, I would like to verbally spar, but I think that that's like, that's kind of almost where it is, basically, <laughs> because we were trying to catch up on this before the show. Uh, you have a right, coach. What he's right? got an interview for the Texans, by the way. Did he? Yeah, I think he's had an interview with the Texans, so which is make it real awkward if he gets a job. Which you know, anyway, well, that's the story. Saying. He may not. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm sorry, so, I interrupted. Oh no 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 no! Please 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 do no no please because I mean this is we were just, we were actually kind of learning this story more as before we started this. So basically, Brian Flores um, was a head coach in Miami Dolphins. Just got canned. He has filed suit against the NFL for discrimination um, based on a text from Bill Belichick, which was an accidental like a flub text saying, "Hey, congratulations on the New York Giants job." When in fact he was just interviewing for it and he had found out that another candidate had already basically, they knew they were going to hire him. And so he was kind of like a flub interview just to say, oh yeah, we're trying to be inclusive. We're going to interview this black coach. And you then know, he tried to say that the Dolphins fired him also not because of his coaching, because he apparently took the Dolphins to the playoffs for the 
for two years straight in the first time in forever or something. I, I honestly, I'm not a big American America. football fan, but he did that. And in the end, they still canned him. So he thinks it's because of racial bias. No, here's the thing though. Like after the bill and check um, text mm-hmm. where he apologized, oh, okay. Yeah. I got, you know, I'm not the wrong candidate or whatever. He was actually called for a second interview and taken out to lunch by the giants knowing full well in his head that he was not going to be hired. He got free lunch. No, but the thing is that even though that the, the, the management knew they weren't going to hire him and hire him, they were still just going through the motions so that they yeah. don't get a discrimination claim. Well, they you got see? one. <laughs> yeah, I know. They got, I it mean, didn't they work. Spent, it yeah, didn't it didn't work. work. And they spent money on lunch. Dude, like, I mean, it was a good lunch. Out a bad day, to pay you know? him off. Do you think he's going to get paid off? Yeah, he's going to get paid off. Yeah, I think so. Too. Oh, yeah, of I think course. So I think so, too. I think, I, well, so look. The evidence is overwhelming, but I mean, it's not overwhelming, but he, I mean, it makes sense, but I don't know if he can prove it, you know? Well, right, uh, right, Bilicic's right. text doesn't mean anything. Well, that means that Bilicic already had the inside line on it. Maybe, and, or it and, could just be a, some kooky old man who doesn't know what he's doing. Don't think so. That's a, if there's somebody that you, uh, that knows what they're doing, that is the, that is Mr. Bilicic himself. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think this is an interesting situation because like, I can see why waste a candidate's time when you don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you already know who you're hiring and especially due to the fact that as he perceives it, it was just because he was black. You know, they just wanted to fluff the fact that they're trying to be inclusive when they weren't wasting his time and potentially keeping him from getting another job as they, he was rumored as, Oh, a possibility of him actually being the head coach. And he ended up landing the Miami job where he did actually seem like he did fairly well, but now he's been laid off or fired. So I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. In the league there, he is, he, there's only two other coaches that are not white or something like that. Very few coaches. No, and uh, one's one, a Mexican. one black coach. Yeah. One black coach. The other non-white coaches are a Mexican guy and a Puerto Rican. All right. Puerto and that's Rican. it. Yeah. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah, I know. It's weird. I know. Right. There's right. not football in Puerto Rico. I never thought he knew a football I state. But Dude, I, got, I, got, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Who Can known? you imagine some kid in San Juan, Puerto Rico, like – being totally into football, it's weird. Gangster, gangster, bro, gangster. You never know. I mean, dude, they, I, hey, I don't know. Either way, yeah. um, <laughs> Puerto Rican cat and a Mexican and a black guy, the only other coaches that are non-white in the league. So is there an issue with – and the, 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 the stat that's crazy is 70% of the players in the NFL are not white. that's that's pretty yeah right i mean that's kind of telling and and i know that being conservative or liberal or you know and a lot of people want to call out shit because like it's the cool thing to do for racism etc but that's kind of pretty blatant right i don't know man yeah Okay, seventy no, percent. I'm not gonna get into that. NFL. I'm gonna I'm gonna fall into a trap here, and then they're gonna they're gonna cancel me and all this other <laughs> shit. But I got I got no, my. No, no, no. I mean, but but and I'm not trying to. And I I honestly think that there needs to be a little bit of like candid dialogue. But if seventy percent of the league is not white, but like one coach is black, what do you think that is? What? Though there's 27 NFL teams, right, or 28. Um, no, 32. It's 32. You're okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 32. what I'm saying. I don't watch yeah. the thing. So there's 32 NFL teams. Only one coach is black, but 70% of the players are non white. Three, three coaches and two of the, so there's one head coach that's black. The other two coaches are like assistant coaches that are the so, Puerto Rican and the Mexican. So what you're saying is that based on the ratio of players to coaches, being the 70% are black players are or, or not there should be more black coaches on, on the league based on the experiences that exactly that players share like exactly yeah i mean I, is what you're saying. What saying yeah I, well not i don't and i'm not trying to say correlation causation but it would make more sense right 
it would make yeah. more sense that there should would be more culture, cultures of color. It's it's like this, man. I want to go back to the pharmacy analogy. All right. So if if you go to pharmacy school, okay, let's just say if you go to pharmacy school, the you know, 90% of your employees in any in given pharmacy are probably technicians. The other 10% are pharmacists, right? But right. if you go to pharmacy school, you got maybe a 60, 30, 30% are technicians, 60% are regular people okay. with no pharmacy experience. Yeah, I got you. Is it because they're more qualified and they pass the didactic stuff and the, you know, the pharmacy technicians are good at being technicians, right? You know, they're not really good at the clinical, you know, thinking outside the box thing. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you go, you know, the egghead, which is the, the, the person who doesn't have yeah. the uh, dork. experience, the guy, yeah, from the, dork, the, the nerd. Yeah. The guy, yeah. That guy, Milhouse. Yeah. Um, he becomes a pharmacist, right? So you don't need to have, you don't, I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't need to have experience in football to be a good coach. Well, but you know, you can, you can have a, uh, okay. I I get you. You can have a leadership style. You can have, you know, make the calculations. Maybe you, maybe you're, you're rain man. You work in statistics. I don't know. (laughs) Right. You're a rain but, man. I'm a good driver. I'm a really good driver. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, maybe you're rain man. What if what if he was a really great coach? You know, no, he, he rain man would have been a good coach at all. To be quite, he couldn't even drive, and then he freaked out. I mean, I don't think he shit his pants. I get that. But... Like, come on, bro. This, this doesn't work out for you for your theory. Okay. No, no. But I'm just saying. The, the, going back to the the pharmacy analogy. You know, just because in a room of pharmacy students, 30% of them will probably be technicians. The other, the other 70 will probably be, you know, regular students who went to right. university and whatnot. Right. Um, so I don't know, I, you know, your theory about because there's more black players, there should be more black coaches doesn't really ring true because maybe they're not, they, maybe they're not the greatest coaching material. Well, you, know? you, know, you never know. And it, it, it that's, that, but well, okay. So look, let's take, let's take your, hold on. Let's do one divided by 32, right? Equals that time. That's yeah. too much math for me, man. I just, uh, you know, because I like math. Oh boy. When you said your basic throw out, which is kind of almost a number I would agree with, that if you have a, that in pharmacy school, you have 30% tax and the rest non tax, right? People, yeah. you know, that makes sense. In the NFL, only 3%. 70 percent of the players are black but only three percent are are non-white but only three percent are head coaches and if let's say you take a coaching staff right which involves at least that's a coordinator the defensive four coaches right just the four main coaches defensive offensive coordinator you have your your scout your main scout and the head coach right all right that's four people of those right so let's do 32 times four right that's 128 people so you take that you know three divided by i don't i hate calculators three divided ching you know romeo cornell was actually a really good um defensive coordinator coach right he was he's still very good yeah he's still very good if you take the amount of non-whites that are coaches it's around two percent all That's right. almost a statistical bias, right? I mean, you have just think of it numerically. If 70% of the league is not white, but only 2% of them are coaches, the statistical variance alone allies itself to some type of bias. That's all I that's I mean, I'm just look at it mathematically. All right. Yeah, no, right? I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you that. feel yeah. me kind of. Yeah, you know what happens when when Benji's not here? We start talking about math and statistics. <laughs> Motherfuckers are falling asleep right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking, he's fucking nerds over here. Yeah, I know. We, we need Benji. Back, what are you guys going to talk this about? Is what, Benji would have been like, "Yo, can we start talking about this shit and move on?" <laughs> he's like, "These bitches are going to start talking about the three body problem in a second, trying to figure out the, <laughs> the astronomical plane for a planet with three solar bodies." But no, start talking about the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a special way to do that one. We're a bunch of fucking mill houses. Um, so moving on, um, that's an interesting one. But another interesting discussion on race that I think we're kind of running into right now is the Supreme Court nominee that. Joe Biden has already stated will be a black female. 
um that's a big deal right now right where everyone's talking about Mm -hmm. it um you have uh i believe what lindsey graham said something uh, i i gotta double check what he said but there's been quite a bit of banter back and forth so what do you think about that i don't know i mean when it comes to the supreme court and important decisions like that you should get the most qualified jurist out there not necessarily because when you say you're gonna pick a juror based on race or sex you're you're eliminating all the other great jurors out there all the other judges out there that can be just as just as good if not better i think with with any candidate republican and democrat they should pick the most qualified candidate they should just say to people i'm gonna pick the most qualified candidate and that's it and that's the only that's the only qualifications that, that should happen you know what I you know I'm gonna actually have to correct myself. Lindsey Graham is actually all in. Oh yeah, he's a rhino, man. All he's a rhino. All in on this part. Oh no, okay. So look. He's a fake Trump supporter, man. Well, Nuh-uh. okay. We well, I think I think all of the I mean, but but let's be honest with you, most of the establishment Republicans are fake Trump supporters. They just support him because they have to. They all fucking hate him. We know this, right? I'm sure they do. Yeah. They, they hate the shit out of them. They cannot stand him at all. But they deal with them because that's the way it goes. Um, But this isn't the first time there's been some type of mandate, either by a Republican or Democrat, towards bringing someone on. I mean, you could argue, easily arguably say Sandra Day O'Connor. Her appointment was very big um, that they bring a female into the court. Um. You say the same about um, Sotomayor whenever um, Obama was in. But okay, Obama appointed now, her. She's shown to be pretty dumb in um, during okay, the COVID well, and case. Clarence Thomas, also super smart, not awesome dude, not particularly hung, hung not, out with Hunter S. Thompson. N- nope, not the greatest. How many people do you know hung out with Hunter S. Thompson, man, and all lived is, this long? All I'm saying is not particularly bright in his dis- in his discourses either. Um, but there have been several, several justices that have fulfilled that, that have kind of been appointed accordingly, right? I mean, Amy, Amy Cohen Barrett, come perfect on. example like of that. that. He said, I'm going to appoint a woman. Let me find the one that was an Opus Day and part of a cult where well, her husband know, had he, to watch her get banged by priests. I mean, he, uh, he had to pick a <laughs> woman to appease. He, he had to pick a woman to appease the left because they want to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. I get RBG, that. You right, know? Thank you. So this isn't a new concept. I, I, I think I, is it, I don't think it's necessarily, I think it's not a bad thing to bring a black female into the court. I don't have a problem with that. Um, in my mind, because I think, it's at least an attempt at diversification, right? I mean, uh, and I and and I could be, I could be wrong, right? Politic the the, the politic the politicization of the Supreme Court has brought, I would say, our union to a very dangerous pr- situation, right? Yeah. So maybe that's not the best. Thing, do but I know, do think it's a good idea to make it more diverse. Do you know what? Um, do you know what caused the South to join the Union? Well, you mean the other story? way around. You mean the other way. Around. You mean what, what caused the South to leave the Union? No, 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 no. Join. All right. So back post Civil uh, War. No, pr- uh, American Revolution. Okay. Yeah, you, you had these thir- thirteen colonies right, on the right, East right. Coast, right? Yeah. They were going to fight Britain and whatnot, you know. Britain was coming in. They were taking their shit, texting them to high heaven. It and was a two. It was a one or two percent tax. It was. It was. It was like thirty percent because you know that's what that's what commie liberals want. Anyway, one or two percent. Two percent. That's all it was on some fucking tea, and we threw a tantrum. But continue, continue. Anyway, um, anyway. So what ended up happening was that these people, these thirteen colonies, did not have the manpower to to fight off the British. So they came up with the idea of inviting people who lived in the south to fight along with them okay right. even though they did not agree with them on anything okay right. well there actually was a lot the of hesit- south were loyalist colonies because they were making a fuck ton of money yes from the yes. british because they were selling shitload of cotton yes, yes. they were actually and, a lot of them were british uh, loyalists. and yes. people in the north were hesitant on bringing in the south or making a pact with them to fight off the british 
they were like, you know, we don't agree with these guys. They're, they're different, this and that. Well, anyway, they brought him in and they fought off the British. They succeeded in the American Revolution. And then guess what? A couple of decades later, there's a civil war because they still can't agree with each other. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and so that happened. And so now uh, it still hasn't happened. They still haven't been able to integrate. It's still the same battle, you know, um, Southern, Southern values versus Northern values. Right. Um, it's still the same, the same thing. And I think now it's kind of, well, no, it's at a breaking point. It's, it always has. I mean, to say that the tensions went down after the civil war would be, uh, would be an understatement. A gross oversimplification. They yeah. Never over, really yeah. Went. It never went down. It never no, went down. No, and, no. It goes to show that, you know, the, the North and the South have kind of been at each other's, they've been at odds. I'll, I'll, I'll just put that away. Yeah. Even since before the revolution. And oh, the, only yeah. time, the only reason they came together was because of the American Revolution. And the Civil War was a product of, of them not being able to agree on anything. Right. And then we still don't. We still don't agree on anything. Right. You know? Um, anyway, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, people like, it's kind of like Iraq. You know, Iraq is, is they can't agree on anything because they're they're separate factions. Yeah. And 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 the British just lumped them to one country and they can't they can't agree with each other. They were gonna go into the civil war a few years ago. Um it's kind of like that. Oh, you know, yeah. we're 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 one country with multiple two different, multiple tribes. Yeah, with multiple tribes, north and the south. Anyway. Oh, and west, you know, that's you how that, throw that in there. I, I get you. I just think I think I I don't think it's a bad idea to bring her onto the court. Are to bring on, and I think the short lists he has are very, very good. Oh my like god, like these are very good. No, no, no. I, I've kind of gone through them. Um, are they activist judges? I will say yes, like already off the bat. Yeah, they're all activist judges. I don't believe, like I said, the chief justice was probably that's the last. I think, I think chief justice, um, Roberts is probably the end of the line of true Supreme court justices. Maybe because uh, I, I do. I really do. I think, I hope one day that in history, the, the people really see how good he was. He is more conservative than anybody on that court, but he stands staunchly in the middle to provide balance. He is the last of the true judiciary. Like he, he's a true last true jurist. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, but so yeah, no, me, well, these, these will be, it will be an activist judge nonetheless, who comes in. All right. So let me, let me do something here for real, real quickly. Ooh, I'm going to uh, see what we can do here. Yeah, no, of course. You're going to clean some um, pipes out. <laughs> what? <laughs> with, the, with the big, with the pipe on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, let me see what I can, I was going to do something here. Okay. So this is an example of, um, you know, some of the judges yeah. that Biden brings along. I'm just going to do this real quickly here. Yeah, go for it. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to each of the nominees. Uh, Judge Cotto, I, I want to start with you. It's Ted Cruz. Is racial discrimination wrong? Senator, our Constitution prohibits race discrimination. She can't even answer the question. The basis of race. Okay, let me ask again. Is racial discrimination wrong? Senator, as a See, judge, no bitch, I, I, I don't um, deal with issues of morality <laughs> or whether something... So you have no views on whether it's right or wrong? Senator, because that is an issue that is frequently litigated before the courts, pursuant to Canon 3 of the Code of Conduct... Okay, so why does the Constitution prohibit racial discrimination? S Senator, I, I think it's part of our constitution and this nation's history of aiming for equal justice and uh, treating people regardless of any protected class status equally and fairly. So discriminating Big based on race violates, I think you just said, our constitution's history of aim aiming for justice. Is that a fair characterization? Senator, Can the question? our case law uh, if you're talking about race discrimination under the law, yes, pursuant to Supreme Court precedent, uh, race discrimination under the law is prohibited. And so that's it. And so these are the nominees that Joe Biden brings. They can't answer the simple question of whether or not they 
disagree or agree with racial discrimination. Well, hold on. Just say yes or no, man. That's all you got to do. Hold on. You can't do that, though. You Why can't not? do that because Ted Cruz is so what Ted Cruz is angling for once again, because he's a what? fucking prick is he's trying to angle for to try to expose how much of an activist judge she is. Yeah, she is. Right. And, and they all, is. yes, they are. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to discount that. I'm not going to say that they aren't, they are going to be activist judges. Like I said, chief justice Roberts is the last of the, of probably the true jurist. You know what I'm saying? I, I, there's not a, there's not a judge on that court right now other than John Roberts, who is actually somewhat level-minded. Everybody is completely biased right now. You're right. There, yeah. That's the truth. But, but that, but what's his name? Buyer, who she's replacing, is an activist judge. Now yeah. he's had some amazing rulings, and he's seen some of his rulings get peeled back in front of him. He's a very smart man and he's done his job well, but he was an activist judge and therefore him being replaced by another one is, is kind of part of the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? But Whereas you, RBG you somebody... being replaced by Amy Cohen Barrett was just a complete travesty. Okay. That was one activist judge replacing another activist judge. Of right. course, it's in the, other, in the opposite direction. Right, right, right. But it, nonetheless, it's still it's still a dissuasive to the court because I think what we should probably be doing is going towards. I would almost say at this point in time, the court needs to move away from activism and be more conservative in regards of upholding Ooh, laws that have occurred. What? Well, right, right. Yeah, no, because I, I think been, right now, well, right, but you see all these very. You supposedly conservative judges acting very liberal in their activists and their interpretation of the constitution. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Roe versus Wade was a precedent for 50, 60 years. And they just want to flip it out based on religious beliefs. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So don't think so, but nonetheless, I do. I, I think it'd be good. I think it'd be good. I think right now this country overall needs to have more diversity. You know, not in the court, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Our juries, we want them all to be not, diverse. not in juries either, right? Not I mean... in juries or anything. But, um, well, I tell you one thing that's not going to be very diverse, uh, in regards to vaccines is the army as they are now discharging Man. anybody. So, if you're in the US, I, I believe in the army, if you're in the United States army and you have not receive the vaccine, you will be automatically discharged. That's it. So um, this is, is that a good of, idea, though. Is that a good idea? Can they I mean, can there be exceptions? You know, OK, so but see, and, and I'm not trying and I don't want to show in the army at all. And I don't want to show the people right. that are in the army. But all I right. do have to but say that are. they're very similar to us. Right. Then, because they receive they they receive anthrax vaccines. They receive like cocktails the second they walk up they're given like a cocktail of a million different vaccines of a bunch right. of shit so i think in this situation right and medical personnel i think that's kind of what you know you got to deal with right i mean if you're in the armed forces you have to be as healthy as possible to protect our country whether or not that means you believe in it right yeah but see i guess and it goes back to the like you said the regular layman's argument is you know you got vaccines that prevent polio that prevent measles that prevent you know anthrax uh, small anthrax pox, attacks obviously. smallpox but the COVID vaccine doesn't prevent anything you still get covid you still spread it i understand i understand and i get you and i'm and like i said for the most part i'm with you on this but as a medical person, or if you're in the military, you're just going to have to take what you give it, right? It's a spoonful of sugar shit. That's just the way it's going to go. This is this life we signed up for. This is the life that you have to deal with. But reduce our armed forces right now um, is not a good idea. It's definitely not. Well, no, no, no. I mean, 
I'm, we need I, them to build the wall. We need them to uh, secure the border. <laughs> we don't need that many. I'm just to build kidding. The wall. <laughs> we don't need that many to build the wall. Actually, I we mean, do need them to build the wall. Yes. Oh, and, dude, and secure the border. Engineer, and, they got that. Okay, look. I'm just kidding. But no, we do need them to, to protect this country. Right. And I think the military should protect this country. But at the same time, as soon as you get into military service, you're given a cocktail of shit that most people don't even know what it is. They're giving advanced medical treatments they're giving multiple vaccines boosters everything all the time that's just part of the game that's what you signed up for that's the reality that you're in so in my opinion i think that that they should be they're very similar to um to medical personnel and that's just what it is and if you can't agree with it then maybe the army really isn't for you because in the that's end, true. you got You have to move on. You you have to figure out what you're going to do. And I, I just think that's just a responsibility we all have to bear. Unfortunately, um, you know. And I hope one day we we figure something else out. Yeah. No. Of course, I'm going to be very clear with you too. Okay. No, I was just getting ready. Uh, I was getting uh, the, the clip ready for the next oh. segment. Oh, what, what was it? Well, for which? Uh, truckers in Canada. Oh my they, goodness! They're I blocking Ottawa one. and all the traffic well, and just honking their horns. Well, before we get into this, notice how much play did this get on CNN this weekend? None. How much play did this get in our in United States national media? Not really, nothing. Very little, and and just to be so, just to kind of let everyone know, in Canada, they were trying to force mandatory vaccines on truckers in particular right canadian truckers yes. canadian truckers and they weren't having it and so basically they formed a convoy i believe of 2000 trucks right something like that yeah some a substantial very substantial percent. number of trucks 18 wheelers that drove all the way into ottawa and basically locked up all the freeways Justin Trudeau had to be spirited away to a compound that no one knew. And so did se- and all the MPs and several of the Canadian, um, I guess they're, they're congressmen. I think they call them MPs. And I don't know why. I mean, it's not like they were coming in with guns and tanks. Well, I that mean, right. That was a narrative they tried to paint was that this is a very scary group. But in the fashion of most Canadians, if there's any Canadian listeners out there, they were, for the most part, Peaceful. Pretty polite. I mean, I think there's a lot of. I mean, I, most Canadians I, are polite. Right. Exactly. Ever been to Canada? They are. Fucking Canadians are awesome. They're fucking. Dude, cool I, I love Canada because I can walk on Vancouver at night and not worry about getting shot. No, no, no. There's some parts of Vancouver you gotta be careful. There's a lot uh, of scary uh, shit. No. Too. I walk with my eyes closed all over Vancouver. No, you do not. You're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> walk into some maple syrup and get stuck. Um, but you not, know what? I might get shanked. I might get hit in the head, but I will not get shot. <laughs> Whatever, dude, anyway. they're gonna shoot your ass. Um, I, 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 right, I get you. And so, right now, there's, so there's a massive protest. So, you want to run that clip? When he, is there, what are we, yeah, got here? so, so this is uh, Justin Trudeau, and he's talking about, um, you know, he's not being unreasonable, he just doesn't want to meet up with these truckers, and he'll tell you why, and, and examples of where he has met up with other people, which isn't very encouraging. It's just a minute clip. Hang on a second, it's coming up. We are not intimidated by those who hurl insults and abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. We forgot to say A. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. Haven't seen it. We won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. Nope. There is no place in our country for threats, violence, or hatred. So to those responsible for this behavior, it needs to stop. To the politicians exploiting people's fears, I ask you to think long and hard about the consequences of your actions. Oh, boy. The nearly 90% of of truckers across the country who've gotten vaccinated, who continue working hard to keep us fed and keep our economy moving, thank you. I want to be very so that's it right well I, 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 so i this that's one thing i do want to address i do believe that and this coming from of course the the left or side of this podcast um there was quite a bit of discussion about the fact that 
truckers apparently were ex- they, they're trying to say they're protesting but they expect to be fed so there is a there's quite a bit of stories regarding them like taking food from homeless shelters i don't think which, so no there was no there, there's reports of this okay and so that's where we step in here skip the noise it, it was kind of was horse shit it was they were actually was giving food to the homeless yeah, yeah it was horse shit they did this was not a real situation Right. This is propaganda, folks. This is where shit like, okay, so this is where, like, if you ever seen the OJ Simpson trial, he was guilty. Right. But then they start producing like the glove. Like, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) They start producing. It's overkill. It's like, oh, oh, not only are you, you know, not only did you murder him, but we got the glove you did it with. And then when he tries to put it on, it's like, oh, shit. John from it, John in yeah. investigation forgot that he had, you know, big hands. So I think that's what's going it on here. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was kind of trying to crucify them when in fact, this is not real situations. And they'll try to show like one or two videos, like they'll show someone who's supposedly a trucker doing this. But for the most part, this was not a situation. And the, and the white in regards to the white supremacist flags that were flown on vehicles, Yes, that did occur. Um, that's not propaganda. That I don't think so, dude. I, those happen. were probably agitators. It was probably uh, somebody right. like Antifa but, or something. Well, I'm trying to tell you, it happened. But whether or not they were associated completely with the larger group of truckers that did it that day, I can't say. But I do know those flags did show up. But whether or not they really belong to that group of truckers that were trying to make a statement peacefully, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's quite a bit of propaganda mixed into this. And that's the scary part is they're trying to tell you that these truckers were racist. They were stealing food from homeless. It, it was just kind of a ridiculous bit of propaganda. So that, that was one thing I think I, I definitely wanted to touch on with you was the way that they kind of treated them, right? And so, you know, the media, the media is not playing this um, here in America, the mainstream media. At all. I think we're, we hear it from um, independent media and YouTube. Well, most or people don't, didn't even know that there was this massive protest, right? No, they didn't. No. That's a problem. Yeah. Not at all. No one fucking knew. Everyone's like, oh, what, protest? What are you talking about? Canadian protest? The, um, I thought they played hockey. You know, the, ate, <laughs> ate, ate pancakes all day. What the fuck? <laughs> ate, <laughs> they got the dogs own- with, the, with the coffee on them, right? Is that the. They're the Mounties, bacon. <laughs> <Canadian bacon. laughs> they, they they put ham and they call it bacon. I mean, they, they're, is that they're, right? They're, they're wacky people. Um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? No one really fucking said this and no one talked about this. But yeah, there was quite a bit. You could tell they tried to play the uh, agitator game with this one. And it was so painfully obvious. It didn't work out. I mean, come on. They were stealing food from homeless shelters. Fuck off. Not like truckers don't have enough money to buy a Big Mac. Give me a break. You know, it, it was a bit. That was weird. That that was the weirdest part from this protest. That and the lack of coverage from the American media regarding this. And what do you think it is, though? What do you think? Why do you think the reason that they don't want to cover this? Oh, it doesn't fit their narrative. It doesn't fit what they want to say. You know, it, 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 it wasn't going to get violent. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't going to get bloody. It wasn't going to be what they, you know, no one wants to see normal people protesting against the narrative. You only want to see the Tiki Torch boys. You only want to see the the January 6th Capitol rioters. That's who you want to see as part of the anti-narrative. You don't want to see normal people as part of the anti-narrative because normal people aren't supposed to be part of the anti-narrative. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. what they wanted. They want the sensationalized anti-narrative. You know, the, the, I mean, the dumbass wearing a, a a fucking buffalo horns and painting half his body colors. Nice. You know, he's signing the Senate. <laughs> exactly. That's what they want. They that's who they want to be protesting. They don't want George from next door, you know, with three kids, two dogs, and a wife who works his ass off as a normal human being, but just doesn't want to do be told what to do. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. doesn't, it hey, doesn't work say, with their narrative. Um, I was actually going to say, have you just noticed how there haven't been any more police shootings of black people? 
<laughs> since Biden took over? <laughs> what happened to that, man? You know what? Actually, there just was, wasn't there? There's another one. Well, there, I didn't right? hear about it. It wasn't yeah, on CNN. Was. It was oh, on MSNBC. Boy. And uh, no one oh, rioted and nobody boy. cared. And uh, it's because Biden fixed all that. He did. He did. Yeah, he, 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 he did. He did. Took his little magic wand and he said, no more police shootings on TV. Well, because I mean, according to y'all, he got rid of all the police, right? So how are they going to shoot people if there's no police? Um. Yeah, that's a great point, especially now that there's crime and stuff. So exactly. He did stop police shootings. Yeah, he maybe did. Die, right. <laughs> there we go. See, we agree on something. He especially got rid of all because the cops. Uh, there's a spike in crime Hence, now. <laughs> there's no way that a cop can shoot someone if there's no fucking cops. So <laughs> I think I think we figured out. I think we may have answered your question right there. Correct. Um, and with that, we should probably we should probably yeah, go we break, should probably touch great. Yeah, I gotta take it for a while now. We were, we really have. We've been trying to be like we're fucking we're getting pretty good here. We're trying to go all fucking break points like Sagar and that other fucking people. We're, we're we're moving back and forth on this. Um, but yeah, time to take a little breaky poo. Everyone, just uh, sit back, relax. Um, try not to honk at the asshole in front of you, because remember he's probably reloading. So with that. Take a little break. Um, now maybe Best song I'll, ever, man. Maybe I'll maybe wonder why we are playing the opening song from Pick of Destiny. And I think that's one of our solemn tributes to a great musical artist who passed away. Um, recently that would be meatloaf um in the second chorus when you hear jack black switching over his father was actually played by meatloaf in pick of destiny and so it just kind of shows you almost what would you say like the epic vocalizations that meatloaf had it was just yeah. it was verbose it was full it was music it was everything man fucking Meatloaf could jam, dude. Could and you know the, th- the weird part is when I first saw that movie, I didn't realize it was Meatloaf because I'd never seen him in such a in like a dad role before. Right, right. Uh, Meatloaf, you know, Robert long hair Paulson. and yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Robert> <laughs> <Paulson>. <laughs> His name was Robert Paulson, and you know what? He fucking went out, and uh, yeah, it's weird, huh? It's yeah, weird. It is weird. Is, it's, yeah, he played a really good like strict dad in that movie. Uh, Pick oh, of he Destiny. rocked it. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> rocked it, man. Spank, you know? <laughs> and the best part is whenever he turns his memory, you point this out every time. Yeah, he his. turns a crossover. <laughs> the Black cross has a cross upside down. Turns and right side up. He turns a, the cross right side up again. <laughs> great movie. So yeah, if everyone gets a chance, you got to watch his performance and pick a destiny. I mean, he was great in other things, but he was more critically acclaimed for, but I think pick a destiny. He, he fucking brought it with that song i mean he because he had jack black in there who's musically gifted i don't care what anybody ever says that dude can rock and then you have him and then you have fucking dio which i left the song going a little bit more for dio's part but yeah we which had was fucking, fucking dio in the same song enough, right oh my god even dio he love and ronnie dio in the same song i mean oh my god and it was epic the whole thing was epic so um if you get bored out there just you know throw 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 up the horns say uh Say uh, you know, say nice little words for the man that is uh that has gone before us and brought a lot of fucking awesome rock to the world. So goodbye, meatloaf. Um, it's a lot yeah. of good times, man. Yeah, some good times. Your name was Robert Paulson. You reinvented yourself. It must have been what three or four times. Yeah. yeah, in the aspect of a career that spanned decades. Um, and uh, yeah, I know a lot of people talk shit because. He his stance on COVID was different than um, than the mainstream narrative or than than whatever. But he was still he should still be looked at and revered as a musical genius who, yeah, who fucking brought it. Nice. So nice. So, yeah. So good luck. Good luck. And uh, was it Godspeed? Godspeed. Uh, meet love. May you uh, may you find uh, the dragon, and may you slice all of his cockles. <laughs> hey also uh one of the people we follow on tiktok uh the the time traveler from the 27th century or some shit like that <laughs> uh we were supposed to find atlantis today today was supposed to be atlantis day where we send a submarine into the into the ocean and find atlantis 
So that obviously did not happen today. At I've all. been on Twitter all day. I've been I've been searching hashtag Atlantis. Nothing happened. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I got was this resort in the Bahamas, which is pretty lame. But um, yeah, I, and I'm gonna even type Atlantis just to see because it's a uh, it's 11:50. Uh, it's 11:52. You know. We'll give him the benefit of that. We got he has eight minutes to fulfill this prophecy. Yep. And uh, to no, find Atlantis, it's just not going to happen. So, once again, our favorite time traveling alien, whatever the fuck he is, unfortunately, I think he's just somebody really bored at home. Probably, I with mean, he really made, good like, editing skills. Yeah, I'll exactly. Still say, I say. Spectacular editing. Skills. Awesome kick ass music, you know, dude. That music is dope as shit. It, keeps, it I mean, kept me entertained. Can I we find that? Engaged. Can we find that music? Can you find don't. one of his? Yeah, can you find it? And no, play man, it? I don't know. You know what I it's did on find TikTok. though. I, I I don't know his fucking name, but dude, it was great. so. What I like to do sometimes, um, you know, my kids are three, and I like to have them identify things in Spanish and whatnot. When asking questions, um, I'll I'll play the um the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire song. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Nice, <laughs> you know. Nice. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty messed up, but uh, <laughs> they, I. I don't know if they want, if you know, if they like it or not. I don't know. It makes them nervous. I think it makes them want to work under pressure, you know. Um, but anyway, dude, you're going know. with the tiger dad thing. What do you mean? You're going all tiger dad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like having them. Uh... <laughs> Never dude, heard of tiger they... moms. Never yeah, heard of tiger have. moms. I have. Well, okay. Being that I'm, it's kind of funny. I'm actually, uh, my mom. I was, well, was Chinese and Mexican. I'm the result of this. Um, there's a there's a term used for a lot of oh, Asian wait, mothers. Oh, like a, tiger. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, did you have it? Uh, oh, I do. I, I think I have it here. Um, let me see. Damn One that. hour loop. Let's try that. Okay, Aubrey. Which one is the car? <laughs> she has to point to it in, in, on her coloring book. You know. Does she, okay, does she Ozzy. <laughs> How do you say, um, how do you say house in Spanish? And I played the song for them and they're thinking, you know, about what the answer should be. And I don't know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I don't know if it does anything for the development. Probably not. Bro, but you know, your kids are going to have a fuck ton of anxiety growing up. <laughs> Every time someone answers a fucking question, they're going to hear the fucking theme from, from, from millionaire or whatever <laughs> fucking pop off like, is that your final answer? They're going to be like pissing their pants. All right, well, <laughs> Rick's going to be paying a fuck ton of uh, of counseling fees one day. God yeah. damn, Rick. <laughs> That's me, man. This is this is how they study. This is how they study. Moving on. Um, no Atlantis. Pretty sure our time traveler has. Uh, Maybe he's in the wrong dimension, right? Maybe he time traveled into the wrong place, or maybe his time travel ruptured the time continuum, and what was supposed to happen never did. But guess what? His prediction did not work out. Um, but one thing that is working out right now is our favorite James Webb telescope, which the other day um, actually has started to begin focusing on a star. Oh, yeah. Which one? Mirrors are flexed. I forgot which one exactly, but mirrors are flexed. They're running, of course, still running diagnostics, et cetera. They're still having to cool down everything so that it, I believe so that it can, you know, for the infrared sensors. So they're still in the process, but they are starting to test optics and they are focusing on a star um, for the first time. So still testing, but so far it seems like it's almost worth the fact that they took 20, 30 years to do this. You know, I honestly think that their mission is to find life on other planets. 100%. Yeah, 100%. because why would they bring theologians from all sorts of religions over yeah. to NASA to talk about how they're going to approach the subject of life on another planet to the masses here on Earth without people, you know, going crazy and killing themselves? Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, 100%. So, I, I agree. I think that is their mission. And, you know, maybe the star has proven to have some sort of radio signals from the past or something. Well, so I, 
I, I think that they, I think that we've already seen some signs of life just with the rudimentary, you know, relatively rudimentary telescopes we have now. And I think this is a way of confirming it. I, I think back in the seventies and eighties, when we we're really hardcore into space, we saw something. And now we're just going to confirm it by sending this ultimately a thousand times stronger space uh, telescope than the Hubble. And we're sending it out there to really take a look at shit. And then you throw in the infrared spectrum, we're going to catch a lot more energy signatures and be able to see more in regards to just regular light spectrum. So, yeah, I mean, I re- I think this is the thing that tells us that we see aliens. I mean, you know, and and um, with the moon missions coming up, supposedly in twenty four and twenty five, really, one of, dude, that's well, not a right? lot of time. That's happening, bro. Yeah. Wow. What are they, they so, going to send a NASA spacecraft or a SpaceX? Yep. No, we're going to send. We're going to send. Well, initially, I think we're going to send a space shuttle to orbit the moon. Then we're going to send, I believe, a module to the moon. And then we'll have boots on the moon. So it's a, I guess, kind of a tiered mission Yeah. before they go straight boots back to the moon. But one of the reasons why they were kind of talking about this was that the fact that there's a possibility that people are thinking about building a very large telescope on the dark side of the moon. Hmm. Very large. Like we're talking about very large, like six kilometers large. Why would they do that? I mean, they already have the, you know, these other telescopes orbiting past the moon. Well, the big reason why is because of the way that they want to collect the light spectrum into the dark ages of the unit of the beginning of the universe. So, and I heard this the other day, basically you have the aspect of the big bang, right? All right. And we're kind of stuck right now at what we can see in the big bang. So there's a period called the dark ages in this expansion of the universe, you know, essentially from a very small dot to where it is now. And so they're trying to capture the leftover hydrogen, the resonance of the hydrogen from that time frame. Okay. And if yeah, we can capture that. that, it would give us a better picture of what the universe was while it was expanding. Yeah. So it's a pretty big deal. So, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's the next point, but I, I really do see, I really do see that this telescope finds chemical signatures. I, I think we're just trying to prove, you know, that there is another civilization. Whether they see us or they don't, probably don't. But we may hmm. see them. You know what I'm saying? Because in such a vast universe, it'd be very difficult to track and see anything. Because, I mean, just the other day, I think I saw a number of the number of black holes in the universe, and I believe it said 40 quintillion. 40 quintillion. 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 Sorry. How do you say that? Quintillion, I believe. Quintillion. I think our... It, it's more than a trillion. There's 40 quintillion. I believe that that was a number, an astronomical number, right? A number yeah. you couldn't reach if you counted every day for the whole, your whole life, just a crazy astronomical number. And we've all, that's just the number of black holes. We're not even talking about the fact that most of our galaxies surround black holes so that we're talking about like some serious shit. So yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We don't even know. So, I mean, just the fact that there's that many black holes, how many fucking planets, exoplanets are there out there? I don't know, man. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Well, think about even if life is one in a trillion at this point, there's a fuck ton of life out there. Even yeah. at one in a trillion odds. There's still a lot of life out there. 
like a lot. Yeah. If you think of 40 quintillion black holes, if you take the fact that let's say the average black hole has a galaxy, right? Let's just say 20% of them have galaxies, you know, the super yeah. large ones, like the one we have in the middle of the Milky Way. The Milky Way has 186 million stars. Each one of those have planets around it. The possibility hmm. that there isn't life is like, that doesn't make sense. So I, yeah. I think that, you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't, mathematically, it does not yeah. make sense. At it point. does not make sense. Hey, I want to play this it. clip real quickly. Yeah. Because you're talking about going to the moon and yeah. all this other stuff, you know. Uh, reminded me of this. <laughs> or maybe an astronaut. Yeah. I'd be the first motherfucker to see a new galaxy or find a new alien life form. And fuck it. Fuck yeah. People be like, great hey, words. Homeboy fucked the Martian one. <laughs> 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 dude i fucking some, you know it's you know silent bob and and jay greatest characters ever far now yeah man too bad if, if you silent haven't seen a lefty man if but. you if you guys have not fuck yeah he is he's fucking gangster though dude vincent skew oh my god um if you haven't if you haven't seen um clerks two clerks clerks one clerks two chasing amy um dogma any of these movies, you need <laughs> to immediately much. go to your to, to whatever video uh, site, streaming site you enjoy, and download them immediately and watch them all because they are all gifts directly from God Herself. And oh boy, <laughs> dogma, remember? <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I know. More set, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything from Morris Day and the motherfucking time to Buddy Christ. You cannot mess with these movies. They're fucking fantastic. You know, Alan Rickman, for, I, for the longest God, time, I could so not sad. see him as, as Snape. I, I could see him as a voice of God. <laughs> but no I Metatron. See him as Snape. <laughs> what was it? The Metatron. The Metatron, yeah. What is Are that? You the rate voice me? of God. Well, where's, the, where's the rest of them? <laughs> I love how he goes. Are you going to rate me? I can't. Angels are not, don't have genitalia. I was like, dude, that is the greatest thing <laughs> ever made. Whenever he flashes the flashes her that he has no private parts. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, greatest so movie. Great. You know what? That's another guy that I was actually really sad when he passed. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Yeah, dude. So Very bad. sad. Uh, yeah. Kevin. Uh, what's the, I, I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. Last name. What's Kevin. Uh, the Kevin the director. Vince, Kim Smith. Uh, no, VSQ, uh, Kim Smith. Yeah. I was really sad. I listened to his podcast after Alan Rickman died and it literally drew a tear to my eye because it, the wow. way he talked about how great Alan Rickman was and, you know, here he was, you know, Kevin Smith going here. I'm just some fucking jerk off director making dumb movies and somebody as amazing and as artful as Alan Rickman, who spent most of his life on stage Ended up becoming Snape, and I mean fucking, uh, what's it called? Um, Die Hard, you know. Oh yeah, that's right. Exactly. I, I played villains. Was a great actor, and he's in here playing the Metatron in one of my dumb movies. And <laughs> he talks to him all the time. And when when he was really broken up when he passed, so I actually really really broke me up listening to that podcast. But great, that was another great person. But. But anyway, so yeah, so uh, guys, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? Jay will be fucking whatever we find in the universe, and um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. It's 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 pretty crazy. I just, yeah, man, that that's wild. So Gonna now, happen. now as we start wrapping this this little uh, this little show up, um, I was trying to say, you know, I think. I think we're missing somebody. So definitely want to say give a big shout out to Benjamin James. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be doing, I think we're going to probably be doing some um, podcasts kind of, he may be in, in now intermittently, but he definitely is always in our thoughts and definitely always is, uh, you know, here to, to, I guess yeah, his, his spirit remains here. Yes. Um, 
because whenever you and I uh, start talking about math and shit, I think about <laughs> Benjamin James and I'm thinking, yeah, he would not put up with this bullshit. No, he wouldn't. He'd be like, you fucking nerd alert. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Millhouse, go fucking yeah. fill some scripts. Um, but yeah, so uh, we are missing Benjamin James. He'll be in and uh, in, out uh, intermittently. But um, we, are, we will definitely be carrying on the spirit of Skip the Noise just to kind of keep you guys informed and abreast of all the situations occurring. And um, we just got want to keep you guys knowing what's happening, what's what's going on there. You still have the the wonderful diapo, the what the what's that? The, dipolar or the uh, the different points of view from both me and Rick. And That's we will right. be trying to uh, I guess maintain this for. Um, for a while so we just want to say we do definitely miss our colleague and uh he'll be hopefully dropping in every once in a while and uh with that i think uh it's time to to wrap it up so it. um you know go home hopefully your drive is over maybe you're relaxing you know go and uh enjoy go your home. evening and you know yeah. so get off the phone and make yeah. love to your partner exactly. watch some tv drink a beer Bye. Watch a little porn. Do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. Wind your day down. Enjoy it. And remember that you have a source of people that you can trust and skip the noise. And in the end, it's all fucking, it's a bunch of wankers anyway. So enjoy your evening. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Good night, right, folks. Guys. Good night. You guys have a good one. Keep it real. <laughs>